Yes, it's another episode. And yes, you're about to watch another mini montage of things I've done in the background. Now today, I am hopefully going to have this engine aligned with this chassis. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the old engine mounts, because at the moment, they kind of get in the way. And seeing as engine positioning, with any hope of engineering, needs spacings and clearance, then I'm going to have to do all this with the car sitting on the bump stops. Now with any luck, that's far enough away from the engine for grinding not to matter so much. But as a precaution, I'm going to plug everything up so we don't get any metal shavings in there. And the plan for this, seeing as everything's still pretty much unknown, I'm going to try and cut these mounts out without damaging them at all. Or as little as possible. Because at this stage, this engine still isn't guaranteed to fit. And if it doesn't, I'll probably end up doing a TD42 conversion. But let's not think about that. Let's cut these out instead. So that's about all for now. Obviously I'll tidy these up a bit more if the engine does end up going in, because I'll have to do that to fit the new engine mounts anyway. So let's see if it's going to fit. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is a V10 set unsupported in a Nissan Patrol chassis. All the heights are correct. This is roughly the point where I want to have the engine sitting. I'm obviously going to have to do a little bit better than those engine mounts, but at the moment that's sitting at the correct height. I've had to put a little block of wood about an inch thick on the bump stops just to get the right height, because when you stick your head underneath, Even though this is a front sumped engine, it's a very shallow front sumped engine. And there's actually heaps of clearance here, including with all the existing breathers poking right up. Just bear in mind, this is the lowest it's ever gonna go. And with the springs, it'll never compress this far. So at the moment, this is a perfectly safe engine position. What I've also found out is that this entire engine assembly is about 100 kilograms lighter than that disgusting piece of petrol over there. Now there's a few other things like the height of the gearbox to consider, but at the moment where it's sat now, 
it's pretty much at the perfect height. It's about 350 mil from the bottom of the cross member to the top of the gearbox, which is exactly the same as the gearbox that came out. Even though the gearbox that came out has a huge mountain here with all the manual transmission assembly. Now, as with anything, this thing didn't fit perfectly, funnily enough. I feel like this exhaust is going to be okay on this side because there's plenty of clearance. According to engineering guidelines, you need at least 10 mil all the way around, and I've got about triple that. Now on this side, I'm probably going to have to do some tricks, because originally this exhaust comes down here and goes on this side of the drive shaft, which isn't a problem on a IFS vehicle because the shaft is straight and never actually moves. However, on a solid axle, you've got everything moving up and down, so it'll smash into the exhaust. So what I may end up having to do is bring it straight across and across the back of the transfer case here, which is probably not going to be easy. The other alternative is to wrap it over the top here, but that's clearance dependent. And aside from that, the only other thing I'm going to have to sort out are these turbo vane control servo motor things. Because those were mounted in the line of fire, they would have smashed into the frame if I hadn't taken them off. And this is obviously the vane controller for the turbo. That moves up and down to control how much or little boost you want at any given moment. Now if I maintain these global measurements, I should, in theory, be able to just relocate this and it won't need any calibration, as long as I'm pretty accurate with it. But anyway, as usual, that and that are jobs for future me. So what comes next? Well, I have this engine sitting in a frame. And I have an empty body sitting over there. Now you might be wondering why I've only put the rear suspension in, but not the front. Well, when I lower the body, I kind of want it to go down a bit like this, because I know I'm going to have some clearance issues around here. I might have to smash in the firewall with a hammer to get it to fit, but at least it'll give me a bit more to play with when the time comes. If it's coming down at this angle, I'll be able to touch it on the back mounts, and then get underneath and have a look at how it's all going to go before I finally set it down. Now this moment is a significant turning point in this project. There's a V10 in my patrol. Now without sounding like Captain Obvious, there's a lot of work left to be done. Obviously I'm limited on space almost everywhere. I've got to do a bit of massaging of the firewall behind there. Not much. There's a couple of millimetres gap there, so I need to make it at least 10 millimetres to get engineered. But obviously I'm going to try and make it a bit more than that, because I want access for tools and stuff. Ideally I'd like to move the engine forwards a little bit, because it seems to be sitting quite far back, and I've got the space. Now it's, easy to see, it's easier to see when I've got suspension fitted, but the steering linkage is going to work, because that's not touching on anything. And the sooner I rip out all the crap that was originally in the patrol, and the dashboard and everything, I'll have much more space to work with. And because these cars don't have a battery in the engine bay, I'm going to have all of this space to work with as well. So I'm going to cut this stuff out, rip out all the patrol wiring, 
take the radiators off. And then hopefully I can have this engine permanently mounted along with the gearbox mounts and this project will actually be able to go somewhere. So that's all for this episode. It may or may not have been a very short one because I don't know. I've just been recording this in little bits as I've gone along. So if it was a short one, I don't care. Anyway, the next one might be more interesting.